Well hello there and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're looking at a soldering iron that comes from company URUAV. I'm sure it's a company that you've heard of especially if you use Banggood. A uh, lot of um, quad products and other products on Banggood. So URUAV soldering iron. But before we have a look at the soldering iron, first I'd like to say um, thank you to everyone who subscribed to my channel. We've got to 50 subscribers now and that's brilliant. I really, really appreciate your support for the channel. Um, if you're the first time you come here and you've seen my channel for the first time, well, perhaps I can encourage you maybe to subscribe yourself. I really appreciate that. That'd be excellent supporting the channel that way, but that's entirely up to you. So the sales pitch is over and done with it. Let's have a look at the soldering iron and what we get in the pack. So it comes in this nice solid case, as you can see. Let's open the case up. And so what do we get? Well, we get the soldering iron itself which is a very familiar looking soldering iron. I think Secure, Sequire, something like that called a quite a company name. But they make a soldering iron very, very similar to this. The reason I went for this one and not that one, I'll come to in a minute. But it comes with a soldering iron tip. Very familiar looking to anyone who has a TS100 like I do. And I can confirm that this one fits nicely in the TS100. You can see very similar in design. Uh, fits in the TS100 and works in the TS100 as well if you happen to have one of those soldering irons so that's very familiar looking we've got a cable here to connect a barrel co uh, barrel connector to an XT60 even though this has as we can see on the end there has a USB-C which we'll get to in a minute so how do we connect up well what else have we got we've got this little stand with a little sponge block to uh, clean your soldering iron tip so you can use that it's very good Got a manual which we don't worry about, little hex, little driver bit, and the thing we are concerned about, it's our barrel connector to USB-C. So that means we can use uh, 4S LiPo, whatever. Um, this takes, let's have a look back, it takes 12 to 24 volts, um, and then obviously the higher the voltage, the more power you get out of the soldering iron, the quicker it heats up and the better it holds that temperature. But We'll also get to that in a minute. So we can connect up, say, a 4S LiPo and through this to a barrel connector, or if you already have, which I do, if you already have a barrel connector set up on your desk, which I do for using my soldering iron and other bits and pieces, then you can just connect that into there and connect that into the back of the soldering iron. Interestingly enough, even though it's a USB-C, I couldn't get it to work with a USB-C cable, say my mobile phone charger, and either a USB-C rated, so quick charge rated, up to 12 volt rated power bank, or a similar um, plug that you connect into a wall socket. I couldn't get it to work with any of those things. So I don't know whether the voltage is too low or there's an issue there, but I can get it to work. If you could get it to work or found out a way to get it to work with like a, a USB-C sort of charging brick with quick charge functionality, it's got to have that 12 volt functionality at least to, to charge this up or to work it not that I've managed to get it to work so if you have perhaps put a comment down in the comment section below but so far I've only used this with a barrel connector and just connecting it this way into the USB-C like that to be honest I don't know why they just didn't put in a barrel connector in the back of it but I suppose this then allows you to connect up to update firmware and things like that if you are of a mind to so how do we set this up to use it like I have here well you can just slot the connector in like that and then use it, but it's a bit loose. Very much like the TS100, it doesn't hold in very well. So what you need to do is just pull this section back here and you'll notice there's a little screw there. And obviously you've got the little um, hex, little sort of drivery thing here that comes with it. And you take that little screw out and then you get a little bag with a more regular looking sort of um, Allen key, whatever you want to call it, hex driver and then you get some little screws in it as well. So you take out the small screw that's, that was in there and then you put the larger screw in, do that up like that and then obviously push the uh, protective thing back onto it like so and then this then should come out. Obviously it doesn't make it very portable because that won't fit in there so you have to kind of undo it and do it up again which is probably why they don't put that the other screw in to begin with. Um, why they make you change it over because they want it to be more portable which is fair enough this is very useful portable iron especially considering the range of lipos that you can connect it through to an xd60 but obviously the more high power the lipo the better um, soldering you get out of this it heats up quick as we said and it keeps that heat for a period of time so 
why did I go for this one and not the cheaper version? Well, it'll come down to the tip. Now, I've been having a problem with getting new tips for my TS100. I bought about three or four of them, and for some reason, the soldering iron just hasn't liked them. I don't know whether they're because they're aftermarket, or it just doesn't work very well, or there's a problem with the iron. It's worked fine in every other aspect. So, I've had to send them all back, got refunds, etc. Because whilst this tip is good, I wanted a slightly larger tip. So I thought well, the easiest option is, instead of buying more tips, is just to buy a soldering iron that uses a similar or same tip and just use that, which is what I've got here. Now, the Secure ones comes with like, it was like a, a chisel wedge shaped tip, whereas this one comes with, as you can see there, it's kind of a tip with like a flat edge, which is brilliant for doing bigger pads, which is what I wanted it for. I do a lot of micros, but also doing a lot of bigger builds. And whilst that little tip on the soldering iron can do the bigger soldering pads, something like this, on the um, on the seven inch build here that I've got, you've got this uh, four in one ESC with quite sizable pads, and you need that extra heat from a, a bigger soldering iron tip to really efficiently flow the solder and get a good um, get a good solder joint on there. And whilst I could do that with a bit of effort with the other soldering iron, I wanted a better tip. So I thought if I get a soldering iron with a tip, I know it works, and also one on the soldering iron just in case. I have issues or lose the other one or it breaks or whatever um, it's unlikely to stop working as they're known to be incredibly reliable but you never know so I went for this one because of the tip you could go for the other one if you prefer the other tip there'll be links in description for all these items let's just show us using soldering iron see how quickly it heats up now I use this with the sort of power brick thing that I've got already the power pack that I use my other soldering iron with a barrel connector on that I showed you just a second ago and that's 15 volts and about 4 amp and it heated it up but it took a long time and it didn't really like it now looking online people are saying you probably need to run this on as high voltage as you can get close to the 24 volts as it recommends as the maximum there um, if not 24 volts 24 volts is relatively easy to get hold of um, just type that into Amazon and this guy here is what I got so it is so you can see here, just a generic AC DC adapter, 24 volts at 6 amps. So this should be more than enough to um, get our soldering iron up to heat very efficiently. So let's have a look at that now, shall we? So our power AC DC adapter is connected. So let's plug it in. Just the outset. The little guy up there. And then we'll plug this in, like so and we have power so we start pressing the button and it starts to go up to our desired heat which is about 200 degrees and i set this before to be at 400 maximum so we're set up now and we're waiting for it to heat up it should start telling us it should heat up very very quickly nearly there 400 degrees to show that we are, we are soldering from cold to solder in just a few minutes so that's really really good so let's have a go then at just soldering up some pads and see how it handles that right then so we've got our pads tinned up nicely there our soldering irons up to heat which is good so let's have a little look and see how well it does It's fine. Do the other one. There we are. And final one. And yeah. And there we go. That was nice and easy and quick, easy to hold, easy to use. Soldering is not the best in the universe, so I know that already. You don't need to comment on it. <laughs> um, but yeah, there we go. They're already tinned up. And the pads are already there with, uh, with some flux on them, and that's connected very nicely and very easily. Yeah. So there we are. So there we go. You are UAV soldering iron. Seems to work very nicely. Obviously, you need to factor in the cost of buying the power adapter um, to plug it into the wall. But apart from that, really, really good soldering iron. Certainly for the price, 
you can't really get anything better than these sort of design ones for the price obviously the more money you spend than this you get a better one and, and I will always recommend the TS80 or the TS100 and I think Secure Sequire make a version of those as well if you can't find these ones those ones are basically exactly the same um, whether they deny that or not I don't know but anyway that's a whole other matter I suppose so there you go soldering iron for use in building your quads and maintaining your quads so I hope you find this information useful thanks so much for watching really appreciate you continue to support the channel that's really brilliant of you guys so thanks a lot and perhaps I'll catch you in a video in the future then take care bye bye